Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you are eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. You may be wondering why on earth we would be looking at the issue of abortion on our podcast entitled Taking Your Next Step as we try to discover Uh, how to be a better follower of Jesus Christ. But uh, as we examine this issue and we look at what the Word of God says, we look at Jesus and what He says, this is an issue that is very clearly spoken in Scripture. We looked at that last uh, in our last episode. What does God say about abortion? God's Word is very clear that uh, at conception, life begins. All life has value because everyone is created in the image of God. And so so as we want to be a better follower of Jesus Christ, we want to take our next step. Sometimes that is us knowing what we believe, not only what we believe, but also why we believe it. And we need to be able to articulate even just for our own selves why we believe something. It's easy to say that you believe it. I mean, I can say, yeah, I believe that, I believe that, but why do I believe it? If someone was to ask me or begin to challenge me or begin to ask certain questions very specifically, could I respond or is it just a belief that I have because I feel like it's the right thing to believe or because uh, someone else believes it? And so a great part of us taking our next step is for you and I to know not only what we believe, but why we believe it. And this is a issue that has been a hot topic for years. And right now with the reversal of Roe versus Wade, it is even a more uh, topic of discussion. And you may be uh, tired of hearing about it. Uh, In some ways, I am. Um, But unfortunately, the issue is not going to go away. And now it is our It is really in our hands as believers to be able to do something about it now that it's been removed uh, from the Supreme Court legislating law, uh, has been put back into the hands of the people, and that resides in our hands. And so as we move forward, we want to look on these next few episodes of What is the Unborn? That's the crucial uh, really answer uh, to the the abortion question. Uh, it boils all down to what do we believe the unborn is. Then we're going to look at how we can engage in meaningful conversations with people we would encounter in the workplace, uh, in on campus, uh, in our neighborhoods, and so forth. And then we'll answer some specific questions as we wrap it up. Like, what about in the situations of a rape and incest? What about my body, my choice? How do we respond to that? The Bible it doesn't say anything about abortion. Does that mean it justifies it? We'll look at a lot of those questions specifically to try to help you as you would engage and encounter uh, people on this issue. So the main issue here is what is the unborn? Is the unborn a human being? Is the unborn a person? If the unborn is a human being, then that unborn has certain rights to life. And so the answer to this question will directly determine your view on abortion. And we talked last time about how the the divide with the personhood theory is trying to divide the human being from the person. So you will find Christians that will even follow along this thinking, how the secular worldview has permeated even into there. They'll say, yeah, the unborn is a human being, but it's not a person. Therefore, we have the ability to do with it as we want. But we're establishing and already have established that there is no difference between a biological human being and a person. Now, Scott Klusendorf in his book, The Case for Life, gives a very powerful, clear definition for the unborn. And you'll hear me say this numerous times because I think it's one we need to memorize and just have in our minds. The unborn is this. It's a distinct, living, and whole human being. Very important. A distinct, living, and whole human being. So we want to establish that truth. And we're just going to break that down and look at it from the, the fact of being distinct, being living, and being a whole human being. So first of all, the unborn is distinct. What do you mean it's distinct as in the fact that it's the humankind? In Genesis chapter 1, we saw, as we read there, that God created everything. And as he created them, he told them to be fruitful and multiply and to replenish the earth after their kind. He told in verse 21, uh, God created uh, great whales and every living creature that moveth in the waters. And he said this uh, after their kind that they were going to bring forth after their kind, the fowl, the water. What do you mean they're going to reproduce after their kind? Verse 24 says the same thing. He talked about the land-dwelling animals of cattle and creeping thing and beast after it 
after its kind, and it was so. And then he goes down into creating human beings, and he said he created man in his own image, basically after his own kind. So what are we saying is God gave Adam and Eve the command to be fruitful and multiply, and humans were to reproduce after their kind. What does that mean? Humans don't reproduce turtles. Humans don't reproduce flying fowl. Humans do not reproduce dogs. Why? Because we reproduce after our kind. That is a biblical principle that God established. And we see that lived out in our world. We don't see dogs creating cats. We don't see dogs having chickens and so forth. We understand that. So is it a different kind of thing while it's in the womb? If we're saying that the unborn is not a human being, that it's something different and at some point in that uh, growth and development, it transitions and becomes a human being? No, it does not. Uh, the science of embryology produces certain facts that you cannot get away from. It's amazing how science has aligned so closely with this issue of abortion. And when I say aligned, aligned biblically. We do not have to wonder what is going on from conception until delivery. We're talking about an embryo. We're to, we're to, to discussing the first eight to ten weeks after fertil fertilization. Then it is referred to as a fetus until birth, at which time we would refer to it as newborn. Just trying to give us some clarity on the terms. Now, leading embryology textbooks will state this truth. Human development begins at fertilization when a male gamete or sperm unites with a female gamete or oocyte to form a single cell, a zygote. You say, okay, lots of uh, big words there. Basically, when the sperm and the egg come together, they create that one cell. That is a zygote. Goat. And so all they're saying is they're establishing the fact that uh, life begins at conception. And the interesting thing, we're talking about an embryo. It contains its own distinct set of DNA. It is unique. It is distinct. It is a distinct human being at conception. Now, a professor at Princeton said this, human embryos are not creatures different in kind from human beings like rocks or potatoes or alligators. They are rather human beings, distinct living members of the species home homo sapiens at the earliest stage of their natural development. They differ from human beings at a later developmental stage, stages not in virtue of the kind of entity they are, but rather by degree of development. He's saying, look, regardless of their size in the womb, they are a human being. They're not something different, and as they get bigger, they turn into a human being. Nancy Piercy has an excellent book, Love Thy Body, and she says this in it, Everything intrinsic to a human being is present from fertilization. No outside force or substance enters into the embryo at any point to transform it from some other creature into a human. The entire human being develops in a seamless, seamless continuum from conception. So just as an infant, just as a toddler and a teenager are at a particular stage in their development, the embryo is a distinct human individual just at an early stage in its development, and it does not differ in any kind. We need to understand that. You see, every single one of us was once a human embryo. You did not come from a human embryo. You were a human embryo when you were in your earliest developmental stages. You did not undergo some substantial change in kind from a non-human embryo to a human being, but they would like for us to believe that. Greg Kokel says this. He's an author and apologist. Living things do not become entirely different creatures in the process of changing their form. Rather, they develop according to a certain physical pattern precisely because of the kind of being they they already are. Very important for us to understand this. So not only is the unborn distinct, it is, it is a human being. We also discover that the unborn is living. Think about this. Dead things cannot grow. Something that is dead does not grow. An embryo begins growing at the moment of conception. So is the embryo dead or living? Obviously, it's living. If it's growing, then it is not dead. It is living. And an embryo is a distinct and living human being. How would we know this? Well, the beautiful thing about science and uh, ultrasounds and so forth, we get to see all that happens in those early stages inside the mother's womb. So an embryo is growing. At week four, the heart begins to beat. That's week four. Week five, hands, eyes, and legs start to develop. 
Week six, brain waves are detectable. Week seven, eyelids, toes, and the nose forms. The baby begins kicking and swimming. Amazing. My wife showed me a picture of, uh, of an ultrasound where the baby was like just ferociously kicking and stretching his legs, and you could see it on the mother's stomach. It was wild, but it was at the early, early stages. What was it? Was it, was it a human being? Absolutely it was a human being. You could see it physically. You could see the part, the body parts. It is a human being. Week eight, every organ is in place. Bones and fingerprints begin to form. And then the last stages, as far as the embryo, week nine and 10, teeth begin to form and fingernails develop. Babies begin to use facial expressions. Now, Joseph Randall, who was a former abortion doctor, admitted that he had never allowed women to see an ultrasound. Wonder why that was. Well, he said exactly why. He said, because we knew that if they so much as heard the heartbeat, they wouldn't want to have an abortion. Why is that? Because you can tell someone uh, through language, through descriptions, that what is in them is not living, that it is a glob of sales, that it is not a person, it has no value. You can tell someone that until they see it with their eyes or they hear that heartbeat, and then they take a total different perspective on it. If you remember on our previous episodes, we talked about a young lady who was pro-choice until she got pregnant, then she began to wrestle uh, with the idea, wait, this thing that is in me is living, it's alive, and for me to take its life would be killing a living human being. And so they understand that. You see, an embryo is growing, therefore it is distinct. It is living in a whole human being. Now, as we come to next week's episode on Tuesday, we'll dive a little further into uh, the fact that the whole, the unborn is a whole human being. It's not just part of a human. Uh, it's a whole human being. And we'll talk about where the dignity and value comes for the unborn. Join with us on that episode. Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend or subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.